Welcome to another episode of this podcast, Fits Your Macros. It is me, Coach Kayleen, the Macro Queen, joined by Coach Ryan over there. Uh, and we had some technical difficulties, but we are Holy, here. holy <laughs> mackerel. That was not my favorite way to start the pod. We are like Ooh. 20, just so you people know, okay? I sat down here. It's it's 1025 in the morning. I sat down here at 945 to get set up for this dang thing. And we're just now getting started because there's so many technical issues. But that's what happens when you make a new studio. And it's going to look badass, people, so stay tuned. New studio design coming. And uh, Kayleen's studio design will be to follow. But so, damn it, we're here. I'm excited. Everybody's excited. Kayleen, what's going on in your land? Oh, man, so many things. But uh, I, I, we can't dig around too much in this territory but big things coming because you know we spent 20 minutes setting up a mic but how about you what about you oh man it's all the same for me you know what i'm really interested in though like i'm really interested in what the hell is the macro treat of the week right now is it worth the macro i'm assuming you got something good well actually you're detoxing so this must be from prior this is, you know, pre pre tox uh, treat. Okay, pre-tox. you know the little Debbie's oatmeal cake things, oatmeal cookie things, like. Uh yes, yes, I've seen okay. them. So they've made a peanut butter one, and I like literally this was one like Brad always rolls his eyes when I like pick things up from the like grocery store, and he's like, "Oh, really? You're gonna try that?" But this one he grabbed, and he was like, "I think you need to try this for your podcast because he wanted them in the house and." <laughs> so the little debbies they're like this big i don't know if you're watching on i don't know if my video will be posted but either way it's like you know probably like a circumference i don't know circumference let's go diameter of like about yeah, three inches a... or so okay i okay, need yep. to say that because that's important here because i haven't even posted the tiktok i'm so bad but like wow it, when i post it which should be sometime this week i'll post it today i swear um I was reading the surveying size and I got fucking shell shocked by these macros because <laughs> a serving size is one third of a fucking cookie. One third of a cookie, three inches, you know, diameter. So that's crazy. Macros for one third of a cookie, because who the fuck is going to eat one third of a cookie is right. six grams of fat. 18 grams of carbs and two grams of protein, which means for an entire Little Debbie's peanut butter cream pie cookie, you've mm-hmm. got 19 grams of fats, 54 grams of carbs, and seven grams of protein. And I know sometimes you ask about the added sugar, so I went ahead and got that for the full cookie. There are 32 grams of added sugar in that motherfucker. Oh, man, for... For one cookie, right? Because who's even oh, doing that? Cookie. Oh, my God. I don't know. I don't know. But the, so, you know, the question is, is it worth the macros? And mm-hmm. let me just tell you, it was really fucking delicious. <laughs> oh, man. I was hoping that one was going to be like, uh, nah, not I worth know. it. Oh, but you know what it is? I think the inside is like a buttercream and I'm a sucker for buttercream. And you could just taste like the powdered sugar in it. And oh, my gosh, it was really good. But uh, don't buy them ever because they will just fuck your macros straight up because there's yeah, no and like how many are in there? How many are in a box or whatever? So it was funny because like I had the one for my TikTok and I didn't even eat the whole thing. So I was like, there's no fucking way I'm spending all my macros on this. So I yeah, brought it yeah. downstairs and I gave it through the rest of the family. We all shared it. But and so like later in the week. So usually, you know, when I do my macro bids, you know, I try it and, and it's very rare that I go back for a second. But I was just like. I was going to pack one for my kid's lunch because health, you know, whatever, <laughs> because, you know, she skates a lot and she can use carbs. And so yep. I grabbed the box and it felt hella empty. And I was like, is Bradley Scott Walker just <laughs> drilling these like every single day? But it turns out there's only six in the whole package. So thankfully there's only six cookies in the whole thing because yeah, I was like, God damn, did he eat like 20 of these in here? Cause it's a big box. But anyway, so wait, what's Ugh. the calorie per cookie on that? Oh, Did you say that part? That up. No, I didn't. Let I me mean, just up. estimate. It's it's like several hundred. It sounds like. Uh yeah, it would have to be. Hold on, you know. Dang, per cookie. Will. See, because I'm picturing, you know, most people 
that are getting down with the cookie like that. They're going to be eating all six of them motherfuckers probably, right? And so, <laughs> Well, because they were very good, let me tell you. They were fucking delicious. But Dang. So, like, taste-wise, it gets a 10 out of 10. And I think, like, the whole family was in agreement with that 10 out of 10. Um, but macro-wise, it gets a negative two because, oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> like, that does two not bites, sound. It's like, oh, hit my, oh, it's oh. 28 grams, I think, was the uh, <laughs> serving size, which. Oh, jeez. It's like a bite. Okay, it's coming up. It's slowly. It's, my it's chaotic. Oh, shit. Let me see what we <laughs> have here. Uh, yeah, 420 no. calories. 420 calories. For a cookie? For a whole cookie. For oh, a whole man. Cookie. Woo. That's absurd. People, that is. people, you know what? Don't be eating this. Let Kayleen do it for you and watch it on TikTok, even though it's not posted, but it will be. So it will be. we'll get over there. And again, as usual, always tell us if you guys find anything. We haven't had too many submissions, you know? We had some for a bit. And now it's been a minute. You know, find something. Even if you know you can't eat, shouldn't eat it, and it might kill you. You know what? Let's make Kayleen eat it. Just fucking... Yellow. suggest it drop it in the comments wherever you're seeing this hearing this or even message us go to go to any of our social medias and message us like be like make kayleen eat this and then you know what it'll happen we'll ship yeah. it right to her house and that's just game on okay that's the way yes. it works so like uh you know what's funny is we're like seven minutes in we didn't even say what we're gonna talk about today we should <laughs> probably get to that piece today we're oh. gonna talk about how many is it five or ten i guess we'll do ten, ten right we'll do ten okay ten Ten uh, gym mistakes, right? Is that what we're saying? Yeah, yeah. Ten things to do in the gym that are just fucking don't do them. Just yes, ten do things it. to do at the gym, don't do them, and it's kind of a, it's kind of a, what, what's the word? Hodgepodge of bullshit right here. It's a bunch of weird, you know. Kayleen comes up with her ideas, I come up with mine, and we just throw that shit together. It's like, it's like abstract art, you know. When you see it, you're like, what does this mean? But then you realize it's fucking golden. That's the answer. So. We're going to basically just shoot through these because uh, we're in crunch time zone. But, yeah, if you apply any of this shit, it's probably going to be good for you, I think. I don't even remember what's on the list, but maybe you can start us up, Kayleen. Yeah, okay. The biggest one that I see 24-7, anytime you go into the gym, you're going to see it. It's people hanging on to the cardio machines, whether it's a Stairmaster, elliptical. Well, you see it more on the Stairmaster and the incline walking. I mean... Let me tell yeah. you something. The second you put your hands up here on an incline walk, all the work that you're going to do is fucking vanished because you yeah. are taking the angle out of there that we need to target the glutes and the legs. So if this is you doing a high ass incline, you're like, oh, I got to level 500 on my incline. But I had to hold yeah. hands like a motherfucking Frankenstein. Guess what? You're you're not really achieving the goal that you Frankenstein. Wanted to yeah. You look like you're auditioning for Walking Dead. And it's not a good look in the gym, okay? You gotta get over that. You know what's hilarious though about this? What? Is that when you put this on there, it says hanging onto cardio equipment. I literally read that as hanging out on cardio. I was like, what the fuck is Kayleen even talking about? I can't wait to hear Nonsense. this one. So so I was all off the rocker already with that one. But yeah, don't be doing it. I mean, it's a, it's 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 not even that it's just, you know, not doing the result for you. It's also wasting your fucking time. You know what I mean? Like, the, if anything in life, you know, you might be like, oh, well, maybe my result was only 50 percent as good today with my cardio because I held on. You know what? You wasted your time. You're going to die, people. OK, take it to that level of seriousness of the cardio. Don't be wasting your damn cardio. Hold on to shit. Get the damn result. You know, you'll be happier. And for all you taking your goals seriously, that's what you should be doing. And if you can't do it without hanging on, that's something you should be talking to your coach or somebody else about. And, you know, find a different form of cardio. I see the same thing. And I'll add to this, not even just hanging on, but like, you know, you always see these people on their recumbent bikes and shit. You know, the, you know, the recumbent bike people. That's a hashtag right there. <laughs> Hashtag recumbent bike people. That could actually be a website, probably. We should start that up. Write that down. But, uh, you know, the recumbent bike people, they're just sitting there like, I don't even know what they think they're doing. You know, sometimes I see people reading like a novel. I see people on their iPad or something, and they're like playing poker. I'm like, what? And the, and the pedal. The pedal is moving so slow that the machine literally probably doesn't even register it. I see flashes in their face because the machine keeps turning on and off because it doesn't even realize somebody's working out. Like, come on. You got to, if you're going to train, train. This is what I've said forever. Like, you know, you're better off, honestly, 
if you want to sit there and read your novel or watch Netflix on your cardio and like not do the intensity that you need to be doing, you're better off sitting on your damn ass and doing that at home than you are in the gym. At least somebody could get on that cardio and actually use the damn machine right. So, you know. <laughs> I mean, totally, totally. Uh, and yeah, I, I think that pretty much hammers at home. Don't fucking lean on the cardio machine. What you got next? I mean, yeah, so I, this goes the same way. So we'll throw we'll throw a little bit in there. Talking and texting on the phone in the gym is so fucking absurd, ridiculous. And, you know, I've talked about this literally since I started doing this shit. Like, because I remember way back, way back then, way back, I was like, what are all these people doing on their damn phone 24-7? Like, literally, it's crazy these days. I, I, I challenge all of you listening, try this shit. I've, I've put this challenge out like a hundred times over the years. Nobody ever does it. But lock your fucking phone up, even if you're training with us. If you use our app to train, which is awesome, we fucking love you. If you are training with us, still go lock your shit up one day, I dare you, okay? Because what you'll learn is if you put your phone in a locker and you quit talking and texting and doing all this shit you're gonna learn something about yourself you're gonna realize that like your intensity in the gym sucks fucking ass all right like literally no better way to put it than that because really that's what happens people get on the phone you know not only is it annoying as shit to like hear the guy this always happens to me literally every time whenever i do curls okay it's only curls i don't know why i go to do curls and for some reason all the motherfucking dudes in the gym doing curls that are around me because, you know, it's the curl location of the gym with the barbells and the dumbbells. They're always got, like, their AirPods in and they're on the phone with somebody. <laughs> and they're, like, sitting there like, oh, yeah, man, yeah, so did you see what fucking Tom Brady did? I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Because I don't even train with headphones, you know, unfortunately, unless it's noise canceling. But I'm like, what are you guys doing? It's crazy. And it, nope, you're not getting a rep. conversation with you sounding like you're taking a shit either. Like, <laughs> who is that doing anything for? Like, oh, God, yeah, yeah that's awesome. Especially taking a shit like you need, you know, gut help from Kayleen that's you know that's the real thing that's going on because like what are you doing and then they do it on the cardio too I see it on the cardio can you imagine what that mic sounds like I'll do it it's like <laughs> like what are you doing come on like, now like an x-rated shit there you know, with the cardio <laughs> stuff. Like, it's not yeah it, not even that it's gonna give you fucking nightmares it's like you're watching saw the new saw movie or something you gotta quit doing that so you know what and the texting texting equally is bad and clearly I've had too much caffeine today, but the texting, you know, I, I sometimes I'll look up because I'll be doing a set, put my weight down, take a minute, you know, look around. You can't even see a single person looking at the world. They're like just buried in the phone. And it's not like they're tracking their sets, their reps and their weights and doing something good for themselves. They're like looking at fucking YouTube or texting somebody, fucking talking to some, yeah, just scrolling Instagram. Oh yeah. You know, the single best killer of gains, scrolling fucking Instagram people. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's the answer because, you know, so much of training is about getting your mind into the actual thing you're doing for form, for getting your mind in the muscle, for actually making sure that the shit you're doing is worth something. And the second you open your phone, it goes away. It's gone. The second you do that. So I challenge people to try it. I mean, Kayleen, how much are you on the phone in the gym? Be honest with me. Don't don't lie. Don't lie. Everybody knows that I coach you, but you got to tell the truth right now. <laughs> I take my phone with me. I don't lock my phone up. But the, here's the thing is, I have the screen up for the workout app the whole time. So because uh -huh. of that, I'm not getting notifications like to my ears or anything. And I'm barely right. seeing them because like, if you leave the phone up, like the notifications might come down. But if I'm like mid set, I'm not seeing them. So I do my best to avoid. However, if I do see something regarding my kid, like my kid's school calling or something like that, obviously, I'm going to take that call, even though most of the time yeah, I like yeah. to ignore it. <laughs> well yeah i mean i think that's a given that anybody out there you should not ignore your kid if they're <laughs> or anything else it's a serious if you're you know your significant other's in a car accident and on the side of the road right now they're calling you don't finish your set okay that's a given i'm not talking about that i'm just saying you know take the experiment of uh ignoring some notifications and i think there's even ways to do this on your phone if you don't want to like literally lock it up you can change the notification thing I mean, I know you do that. I know some other people that I train do that where it's like the do not disturb, whatever. So yeah. try that. Can, do that. Like, lock certain apps too during certain times. So if you yeah. want to like, if, if you don't even want Instagram to be a temptation, you can lock it from the times that you're going. So yeah, 
And it, it will better. definitely up your intensity in the gym and up your results too. And the reason I say lock it up and try it even just one time, I'm not saying do it every day, by the way, just try it one time to get an idea, you know, of just how much you're fucking off in the gym. Cause seriously, I mean, everybody goes to the gym. Most of us don't go to the gym for fun. Okay. If you go to the gym for fun, I'll tell you what, you're not training hard enough <laughs> and you'll learn quick that, you know, you want a result. You got to be doing the right intensity. Okay. So, I mean, that Here's kind of goes right into <laughs> yes. right into what you're talking about next, which, you know, where are we at, Kayleen? You're not working out with intensity. So we yeah. kind of talked about this last time, but whether you're on your phone or not, like, if you want to build fucking muscle, you should be absolutely dead by the end of every single set. And I look around at yeah. the gym and there's very rarely people who are at this intensity. And I almost, I, I had a, a call with my client about this a little bit ago. Um, and she was like, so she's actually, I'm helping her with nutrition and she's doing training on the side. And she's like, I just, you know, I really want to grow muscles and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, like what's your training intensity at? And she was like telling me these weights and like, you know, I'm just like, I, I think honestly, you could do more weight than that. And sometimes in our yeah. heads, we have these like, I don't know, scary numbers as far as weight goes in the gym, like that we don't think we can ever do it. And in fact, I remember one of my fondest gym memories is that I was this is back in my cardio bunny days, and I was just getting into lifting. And in the corner of the gym at my very old gym, there was a bar with two 45s on it, but it was the big chunky 45s on it. And I remember like looking at that bar and thinking like, oh, those are for really strong people. Like I, I'll never be able to lift that bar. And guess what? A few years into my little journey, I do way more than that now, especially for hip thrusting. So it's like, don't put these like preconceived notions of like limits to what you can lift. Always be challenging yourself and always make sure that like, with certain moves, if your muscles are not on fire, one, you're not like building that mind muscle connection or two, you just might not have enough weight on there. Yeah, exactly. And the key is too, you got to understand that, you know, your intensity is the defining factor of results, period. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you're going to get results. I mean, a lot of people think that just going to the gym is something good for you. It's not <laughs> okay. Just going to the gym is not good for you inherently. I, I, I mean, I might be one of the only people say it. I'm tired of all the cushy shit on Instagram. I'm like, yeah, it's about the journey. No, it ain't about the fucking journey. If you don't get the results. Okay. There is no journey. Anyone wants to hear where you lost okay <laughs> like get get where you want to be that's the journey so i mean if you want the best results you got to have the right thing you got to take it seriously it's not just about showing up and you know doing whatever and you know not having the intensity and that's that rolls right there with the next point so i might as well just go to it this is the other one if you're not talking on your phone and you're not talking on you know text i guarantee you you're one of, you, you might be one of these people that are talking to other people in the damn gym okay I go to the gym for, for uh, you know, for years I've gone to the same gym now. I don't know a single damn person in this place. I don't even know. Like, I don't know anybody. And you know what? Call me a dick. Maybe I am. But the truth is, I'm there to train, okay? And I think a lot of people get caught doing that same thing if they're not on the Instagram, whatever. Maybe you heard that point and you're like, oh, that's not me. I don't do Instagram. Great. Good for you. You know what you are probably doing? Chatting with the fucking, you know, your buddy or your friend or whoever that you see once every every day that you're at the gym basically and you talk for 30 minutes about nothing while you're sitting on the damn chest press machine stop doing this i mean i'm telling you it just kills the intensity again it's like you know i read uh i've read and studied a lot of like you know real old shit about bodybuilding where it really really started and like gyms never had any of the shit they have now it's like i wish there was a gym that was like the old school way where it was like a cold ass dark room with one light up on the ceiling because that's all they had for electricity back then and you know no music bunch of people working out the only noise you heard was clanking of weights where is where did that go you know the results you know people look back now and they're like wow a lot of these old school bodybuilders got really good results they must have been doing that no they, they were training okay people but kayleen are you a talker you talk to people in the gym Oh man, no, I have the worst resting bitch face. And they probably think I'm the biggest <laughs> pot there, but I swear to God, like I'm really nice. But like, I'm just like, laced and to the point where like, I won't even notice my own husband. Sometimes Brad and I work out together and like, he'll like, just like wave at me. And he'd be like, dude, you totally ignored me when I waved at you. And I was like, oh, like I am like, laser focus this machine this machine this machine i don't even want to look at anybody in the eye because i don't want to start dialogue because i don't want that intensity and there was a while no. i was going to this gym 
And like, I asked to work into a set because like, I just had one set left and this guy was on it. He seemed friendly enough. So I was like, Hey, do you mind if I just work in? Very nice guy. But oh my God, I unboxed like Pandora's box of like chatting because then from that day on, it was like, every time he see me, he would see me, he would start this like 30 minute conversation. And I'm just like, oh my oh. gosh, how do I like, oh, like, and he's a totally nice guy, but I actually ended up like kind of switching gyms and then I didn't have that problem anymore. Yeah. But like, don't be a chatty Kathy. Don't be a chatty Chad. Like get your workout in. Cause it's awkward too, because then I feel guilty. You know me and my Catholic guilt. I feel yes. guilty. I'm on this machine. This guy won't stop talking to me or this girl won't stop talking to me. And in fact, like when I go to the certain gym, because I used to do group fitness and I used to teach it, I run into people all the time. Yeah, so that's I, like, the worst. Avoid that gym. I go when I have to because it does have some of the equipment I have. But like I try to like vary up my time so I never see the same person twice. You know me. I'm like, I told you, I'm a gym nomad. I'm like fucking all over yeah, the place. Yeah, that's the way you should be. I mean, that's the end of the day. Again, you know, it's great to have friends. People have all the friends you want, have all, you know the chat and socializing. I mean, I've seen shit on Instagram where people are like, you should be able to socialize in the gym. It's a good thing. No, it isn't. You know what it is? Go train, work your damn ass off, spend your hour in the gym, and then go sit at your fucking coffee shop and socialize. Okay. Take your friends. Say, you know what? Hey, we're training. Like I work out with my brother. Okay. And me and my brother, we don't even talk to each other. We literally make it a goal that we go in and I'm like, Hey, you know what? We're, we're not going to, cause we did get in a thing for a while where, you know, we're talking about training. We're talking about team flex stuff, other things we're working on where we were talking too much in the gym and it, we were just both getting weaker, you know, not feeling as good, feeling like we got the end of the day done workout sucked. So, you know, we got to the thing where it's like, you know what? We can't be talking in here. We're going to come in. We're going to train. And if we got things to talk about, it just means we ain't talking enough about the other things outside of the gym. So, you know, that, that's kind of a way to think about it. If you got friends, people in the gym, whatever, go see them outside of the gym. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, honestly, because, too, how, how great – if you want to talk about, like, contributing to a friend relationship or something, how great are you doing that in the gym anyway? You know what I mean? Like, you're talking about the dumbest shit. You walk in. You're talking about politics. Some guy's mad about some football thing. You know, it doesn't really help God. anything. <laughs> That's why I'm forever in this, like, wanting to have a training partner to spot me, but also not wanting to have to yeah. deal with anybody and be in this lone wolf phase. So Brad is, like, perfect. Like, literally, we enter the gym. We part ways. And then, like, I'll text him if I need a spot. Be like, hey, can you spot me? Or, you know, we'll kind of, like work together if there's a machine that like i need that i'm like hey is this machine you know free if, if so like put your water bottle there i'm almost done so like <laughs> it's the perfect relationship to be like yo spot me here and then leave don't talk to me which he never talks to me anyway during the workout where it's like perfect it's perfect <laughs> yeah i remember i remember when you guys worked out with me at lift factory and it was like the quietest that gym ever was because we were like only a few people in there and it was just everybody doing their own shit that's how it should be though that's my point so they don't have, be like, talking sensory it. hour at the gym and you know, you know what stores have like sensory hour where they don't have any music there's no yeah. loud flashing lights or whatever they need to have that at the gyms guys petition for your gym to have like sensory i'm hour. gonna open a gym that's just fucking Do dead ass quiet I'll be, uh, it's gonna be a costco size place <sighs> where it's just quiet let's see what happens if you guys want piece. you want to see that happen drop it in the comments okay costco gym let's go costco okay. sponsor us all right uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do we got next, Kayleen? Okay, what do you oh, got? Okay, so this is a big one. I feel like, especially for the ladies, I feel like the men aren't doing this quite as much, but doing way too many HIT activities during a week. So HIT activities, if you don't know, high intensity interval training. That's yep. your boot camp classes. That's your sprints. That's I mean, it can be cardio. It can be weightlifting intervals as well. Circuits like those have a time and a place but it's not every single fucking day. So if that's no. what you're doing right now, fucking stop, especially, especially, I don't know what percentage of people have thyroid issues, but it's a lot these days. And if you have, especially Hashimoto's, and you're doing high intensity interval training, even three days a week, you can be really doing yourself more of a disservice than a service. So I know with Team Flex, we try not to put as 
much cardio as possible until it's needed. Obviously, we train smart, not hard. So when you're out of prep, I mean, unless you really like cardio, I know we've got a couple of people running and stuff, but we're going to try to not have any cardio in your plan and then slowly taper that cardio up. And yes, you might get a few sessions of hit closer to the stage, maybe four weeks, eight weeks out, or, you know, it doesn't have to be the stage. It could be whatever your goal is. Maybe you're getting married. Maybe you're going on vacation, whatever. But it is very few and far between that you'll see someone, especially with seven days of hit. That's just fucking craziness. But yeah. way too many of you are doing way too much hit. So take a step back. Look at your workouts. If it is all boot camp this, high intensity this, cardio kickboxing this. Because I used to be the cardio kickboxing queen. I taught yep. like how many classes a week. I lifted on top of that. And I, I need to do go back into a comparison of like how I would show when I was doing group fitness and working my body to the fucking extremes versus now where I only do cardio when I have to, it is out of control. Yeah. It comes back to the same thing that I always talk about, which is like, you know, you're training for something. There's a difference between working out and training. And I've said this for years, but like there definitely is, you know, group X, for example, a lot of those to me are just workouts because you know, you're not, you don't have a specific plan you can show up or not. You don't have any specific outcome you're going to get by the end of three months of XYZ. You know, there's no predictability. It's not like you could say, I want to do group X class to get my shoulders bigger, right? Like maybe they will, maybe they won't. There's nobody checking. There's no, you know, it's not going to guarantee to happen. So, uh, you know, a lot of the, the group X stuff too, you know, we're talking about that, but hit in general is it's just uh, this false kind of idea that that's the best way to do things to save you the most time. You know, it's going to be a good workout, but there's also this to think about too. What makes you the most tired and burnt out is not necessarily what is the best workout, right? Like I remember that I used to have when I used to train people in person, which seems like 78 lifetimes ago now, but I used to have clients that would come up to me and be like, yeah, well, you know, today was pretty good. I didn't feel like I was uh, as tired as I was when I did this class that because like the gym I worked at used to run classes too. I'm like, yeah, well, the classes are designed to just make you think you did some shit. Like that's the truth, to be honest. Like, you know, uh, you, you want to feel really tired and burnt out like you did a lot of shit. Do 300 burpees in a row right now. But do you think that? Put you somewhere near your goals? The answer is probably not, unless your goal was to do 300 burpees faster, because that's just the split. I mean, you you don't want to be doing. It comes down to again, if you're going to be doing meaningless training, or you're going to be training for where you're going for a goal. It's like if you are exactly where you want to be in every single way, you still shouldn't even be doing random hit workouts and stuff. It's just not gonna. It's always gonna take away from the bank of what you got. And and here's the thing that kills me about it is that people are paying so much to go to these stupid boutique studios yeah. that, and, and they're going nowhere with their progress. So many clients, they're like, oh, I did, I won't name it, very big fitness studio that kills you with cardio and there might be a color associated with it. You know, like, yeah. oh, I did this and I'm not seeing results. And it's because they're murdering you with cardio and you're not right. really building strength. You're not able to lift the weights to the intensity because you're doing 2000 reps of this thing. And like the kicker is, I don't know exactly what their costs are, but especially if you were going five days a week, which I bet nobody wouldn't because that would be absorbently expensive. You could get a training plan with us for way less. And that would include your nutrition. That would include five workouts a week. That would include a coach in your pocket 24 seven. So if you have questions, you can ask them. Like I, I under, I don't understand like how people pay that money for the boutiques, but that's just me. And that's coming from someone who has a deep affinity for group fitness. I just can't, I can't with those. Yeah, and it's about the point that it's a starting point, too, for most people, you know, like it's a beginning thing. And that's great. But uh, if you want to get advanced, you want to get advanced goals, you know, the random hit stuff. And I know there's probably maybe some CrossFitians listening. They're like, CrossFit is great. Yeah, well, CrossFit can be good. But you know what a lot of the top CrossFit athletes do is not only CrossFit. OK, like that's also the truth. The hit workouts are uh, more like challenges. They're more like a thing you're supposed to do as a challenge, but then you're doing other things the other time, you know? So it's not the 15 minutes that made you in other words, right? Mm -hmm. Like I used to train a lot of CrossFit athletes, some of the top athletes at the time, cause I lived in Santa Cruz, California, where that's the birthplace of CrossFit. And we were doing like strong man stuff a lot. We were doing a lot of power lifting type stuff, you know, to get them ready for the games. The other stuff is the Metcon work and all that. Everybody knows that that stuff generally will burn you out. It'll tax your CNS. And it's also high in injury 
prone, you know, like how many people have got injured doing CrossFit? Fucking tons of my clients that used to do CrossFit have permanent injuries from it. So, I mean, I'm not talking on CrossFit, but I am a little bit, you know, it just, you just got to know, like, if you're going to be doing high intensity stuff, it's got to fit and it's got to have a plan. It's got to have a purpose. And if it does great, but don't just do it meaninglessly and don't do too much of it. Cause it's going to end up toasting you, burning you out. Mm -hmm. And a good CrossFit gym will have a good mix of like, you know, doing that kind of Metcon stuff. And then like in between working towards one rep maxes here or there or anywhere. So if your CrossFit gym has like five days a week of just murdering your soul, maybe it's time to look for a new one if you truly love CrossFit. Yeah, exactly. Because a lot, you know, CrossFit has advanced a lot, obviously, too, since it started. And there's a lot more variety and everything else in there now. But point is, either way, hit workouts, doing too much of them. It's good, uh, you know, to start maybe. It's good for variety, but is it the best thing for results? The uh, jury is out, but I would say no. <laughs> okay. I would say no. So, uh, Kayleen, bring us on the next something else here because I got to get my charger for my computer. It's about to die. So okay. Just All right. Oh, my gosh. It's like, oh, my gosh. Everything that could go wrong would go wrong. Okay. What's so. It is happening. Okay, so the next faux pas at the gym is being there too much and not taking rest days because I know I used to be one of those people, hashtag no rest days. Part of it was because I was obsessed with working out, but the other part of it was that I was a group fitness instructor and literally there would be days where I would not be able to have a rest day, which, you know, looking back, I wish I would have prioritized my health and my well-being because you think oh working out seven days a week is healthy it's really not guys like talking from someone who has been there before it is not you need to do something restorative one to two days of the week at least so i i kind of shifted both ways when i stopped doing group fitness i like i kind of took my weekends and i was like i'm not doing a goddamn thing because i'm like killing it And then nowadays, within like the last year or so, I've actually incorporated yoga on my days off. And that's been helping so much because, you know, the I feel like doing the seven days a week toasted my freaking back. I never had any time to recover. And then when I was trying to heal my back, I was like, well, I'm not going to do anything on my rest days. But then like sitting on your ass for, you know, two days straight also doesn't do anything for your back in case you didn't know. So I found a happy balance. So learn from me take the rest honestly you will feel so much better if you just take the goddamn rest instead of trying to be a weekend warrior as well as you know a a daily warrior just do it yeah yeah i mean it comes down to the same thing i've been saying so i don't want to say it again i won't say it again but the point is you know you really got to understand what you're trying to do in the gym some people the only argument i have for this is some people tell me you know oh it helps my mental health a lot if i go to the gym okay great that's awesome that does work for a lot of people the reason a lot of people work out but there's also a million other ways to stay active that are not in the gym you know and that's what i encourage people to do especially with the science we have like about everything that humans need to survive and be their healthiest that we don't do every day. <laughs> like go the fuck outside, you know, go take walks, go take a Daily hike. Sunlight. Yeah. Yes. Sa- sunlight. Exactly. Air, not yeah. Whatever gym funk is going on. There. Yeah. Like, you're breathing so everybody can... else's breath at the gym. Come on now. That ain't good breath for me. You know, like freaking protein farts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you gotta be, you got to be considering the fact that uh, a lot of times if you actually get out, you know, you go into nature or something like that. And those of you that live in a city, do it anyway. OK, go find something to do because, like, it'll change the game for you. Uh, it, it really does add a lot of variety and it allows things. You can still be active, you know, whatever. I think your point of this was that, you know, you don't want to be doing seven days a week of workouts. That's great. But, you know, activity is one thing. Training is another thing. And you'll learn quickly the difference, you know. So if you're training right, like we talked about earlier in this episode with the right intensity density and everything else and allowing the optimal recovery you know activity becomes a different thing activity is just doing something which is also crazy to me that like we've lost the idea of that like people think that rest day has become it's almost like we have two really crazy far stigmas here in the way that things go you know it's like you're training too much that's really bad but also you have to rest way too much and that's also bad like the answer is in the middle people okay the answer is in the middle here because you don't want to be the people who are like oh it's rest day i remember this guy that i used to train I didn't train him. He used to train at the gym. I used to train at at the time. He was like some jacked bodybuilder dude, like when I was younger. And I was like, wow, this guy's so jacked. And I remember he came to the gym one day and he was like, uh, he's like, man, Ryan, I just can't keep any weight on me. 
I'm, I'm training and trying to get big. I'm doing all this, but you know, then my kids want to go walk at the fair or something. And like the fair was in town at the time. And he's like, and I lost four pounds. I'm so pissed about it. He's like, rest day. I got to just lay around or I lose weight. I'm like, dude, that's not the, this is what you're doing is probably not the best thing to be. If you can't take a walk with your damn kids, dude, you know? So like, you got to be in the spot where, you know, Netflix all day on Sunday is not necessarily your rest day. I don't think that's the best thing either. You know, figure out mm-hmm. how to get some activity, let your body recover, and your body will tell you. Like, you'll know. If you're over fatigued, overtired, overly sore, all these things are signs that you need to recover better. But it doesn't necessarily mean, like, there's no part of your body that says, hey, you know what? We better just sit on the fucking couch today. That doesn't happen, people. And a lot of times your recovery and everything will be actually improved. By doing some activity, walks, sunlight, getting outside, taking a hike, playing a sport, doing other things. Like you mentioned, uh, you know, was all of a sudden we're training a lot of people that are running and stuff. Like running is generally not, uh, depending on your intensity, it's not going to be something that screws you up too bad. So, I mean, getting active and doing other things is good to do. But doing uh, other exercises, other sports, try some other shit, people. There's more than just barbells and dumbbells. Yeah. And as a bonus, you can get your family involved with things like that, too, because you can't bring all the kids to the gym. But like, hey, you can take your kids to a park and play some, you know, football or, you know, just dick around like we want to go. We've been saying this for weeks that we're going to go like rock climbing, go outdoor rock or indoor rock. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Find something active that you can do together as a family. And then hello, bonding time. Woo. (laughs) Boom. Exactly. You know, fit other goals of your life, other things. There's more than just the gym, people. There's more than just the gym. And it's important to focus on the other areas of things. And also, uh, you know, you'll be pretty humbled in a lot of situations is what I found, too. Like, I remember, uh, you know, doing different things. I was going to the gym all the time, whatever, training fucking strong as shit. And then I would, like, try to do something random. Like, I'd go hike at, like, uh, the river that used to be in the area I lived in. You know, like a river or some shit and climb some rocks, try and fuck around. You know, do whatever. And I was fucking smoked. I'm like, Jesus, can deadlift 600 pounds? Can't climb this boulder? What am I doing with my life? You know? Okay, so I started taking my aerial classes that my daughter's been taking. So aerial silks, like acrobatic type things. She's so Cirque du Soleil type of shit. So I'm like, you know, I fucking want to do this. This seems fun. Yeah. It's the hardest fucking shit. And so my daughter was with me one day and she goes, Mom, I thought you were strong. And I was like, Oh, God damn. Like, uh-huh. like, she can climb fucking 20 feet up a fucking silk and I can do two climbs and then I'm gassed. So, yeah, exactly. Diversify. That's diversify. the point, right? And it becomes better for you, too. You know, a lot of people we didn't even throw it in. A lot of people like, like yoga, Pilates, I'll do those things other days, you know? Don't be going to the gym trying to lift weights every day because also it doesn't do anything. You're not going to. Like, you're going to break down muscle. If anything, you will not build new muscle. All you ladies out here or all you bros trying to train your biceps, ladies trying to train their glutes, whatever. I got to get bigger this. this seven days a week in the gym ain't doing it, okay? You just mm-hmm. – you're wasting it. You're going to have a pancake ass. And all you you bros out there trying to get bigger biceps, you know, you're going to have these scrawny little scarecrow arms by the end of doing that if you're training seven days a week. It's how it works. So let's make sure we're optimized, people. Uh, let's see here. Our whole list is out of order, so I have to see where we, <laughs> where we are are here. Oh, here we go. I like this one. Camping on equipment. Okay, this is a disaster. Uh, let's let's not talk about the other two things. You know that we talked about where it's the texting and the talking. That that camping can happen then. That's a given. But the camping also happens if you're the asshole who has like four barbell exercises in a row, and you just decide to take the whole squat rack and barbell platform and everything right and literally this is how serious i am about this when i design training programs i specifically try to make sure people do not do this because i'm just like can't live with the guilt of knowing that i am the guy that created the workout where somebody did that to somebody because literally if you actually are training right and you got you know a good set of exercises whatever in a row of a certain piece of equipment barbell dumbbell whatever you can literally camp forever and when i say camp i mean like you're in one spot you don't ever move it looks like you're camping could be could be camping might as well put a tent up point is 
it's a disaster because other people are in the gym, believe it or not. You know, other people have reasons to be there, exercises to do, and there's no reason people can't work in rotation. You know, I'm not necessarily an advocate of working in. I hate that shit. I hate having to talk. To, we already went over that, but you know, I am an advocate of like, if worst you want, <laughs> yeah, worst case scenario, but it would never happen if everybody did this. If you really, you know, right. it would never happen. So, you know, don't be the people that are camping. I just don't think it's a good idea. It's not the best way to train for one. You know, it's good to have a little bit more diversity in the way you do your exercises throughout your workout. And also it just makes you a fucking dick. Okay. Like you, I'll tell you the amount of times, especially now it's new year. How many times has this happened to you, Kayleen? Were you going in there? Cause I know I got you a lot of barbell work and you're, you're sitting there waiting and you're probably, you, do you have to wait at all? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do. I do the stare. I'm just like, yeah, I'm waiting like, for that. Like, and don't you yeah. dare cut me because I've been fucking waiting. You know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so here's here is what grinds my gears, and it's not necessarily people camping on equipment. It's people putting their fucking shit on benches and boxes because oh. they're damn lazy to put it on the floor. And then I don't know if they're using it. I don't know if they're saving it, but I get so angry about it. And the fucking <laughs> Stanley cups everywhere. I'm just like, Oh, there's like a group fitness class. I got out and there's like the purses and Stanley cups on this box that I needed the only box available. And I'm just like, is anybody using this box? And they're like, Oh no, no, no. Let me move this. And I'm like, but like, I am bitchy enough to ask. There are people out there that are too shy to ask. And it's taken me years to be able to ask people like, hey, are you still using right. this? And even so I'm like, it's okay if you are. I'm totally fine. It's fine. I can find another one. But fuck, just if you're listening to this, just be aware. And, you know, we're all newbies. It happens. But, like, put your shit on the floor. Don't put it on a bench. Don't put it on a box. Don't put it on a yeah. machine you're not using. Oh, my God. There's one day we have two hip thrust machines right next to each other at the gym that I try to avoid because of Chatty Cathy's. There was one lady I saw on one and in between her rest periods, she was fucking sitting on the other hip thrust to recover. And I'm just like, are yeah. you using this? And she's like, oh, no, no, no. I'm just recovering. I'm like, disaster. Fuck you doing? Like, what the fuck? So, yeah, if you can't tell. I get a little heated <laughs> about that. Just a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a point. And, you know, it's not even. It's again just ridiculous to do. Don't do it. There's no good point to do it. And a lot of times, what ends up happening is you end up combining. You're a combiner. You become the person who's camping and also talking on the phone or also texting. So it takes you actually six times longer than it should have anyway. And I mean, yeah, the whole water bottle thing, you know, uh, pff, that's crazy. I can't even, I, I don't even know how we forgot to put that on the list. But oh, at the I, end of when the day, I saw that you did the camping, I was like, I got to squeeze this in. Here. Yeah, key, that's definitely another form of camping. That's like, yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Just don't do it. It's really? not right. And, you know, if you really? want to do it, if you want to train that way, buy your own gym shit. Is that the, fucking, you know, seriously, <laughs> fucking buy it. There's tons of you stuff out there. Most of you can do plenty with a barbell and some dumbbells. Just go get that then and just sit in your garage and camp all day. You can camp six hours and nobody will be mad. Nobody will miss out on results. And because that's the thing about the gym, people, it's not only about you. OK, everybody goes to the gym for their own goals. But you got to remember, everybody's there for their own goals. It's not only about you and what you're trying to do. So I think that's a serious, serious. Yeah, it's just not right. It's not right. This is a very ranty episode today, but we're on fire, <laughs> folks. Guys? If you guys okay. like this, you know, make sure you subscribe, follow. If you don't like it, comment it and I'll delete it. <laughs> we'll take it uh, <laughs> on the next one if we're being too angry. But I think it starts with the one cookie being three servings. <laughs> you know, exactly. I think that's what started this tone. Uh, this start oh. this tone got started for me with the mic, the damn thirty minute <laughs> mic fix. <laughs> I'm just pissed really today. Started. But no, I mean this is these are all beneficial things people are doing. All right, where are we at, Kayleen? What do we got? I don't even know how many we've done yet. We're probably like eight or nine, well, right? We're on the last few here. So okay. my last one here is not doing your mobility or your warm up because you're short on time. Okay, fucking yep. still do it. I don't fucking give a shit. Like that 100%. shit is important. If you want to be on a one way train to Injuryville, sure, skip your ten minutes of warm up cardio. Skip your mobility. Skip your warm up sets and just go right into doing your one rep max for deadlift if you want that train. But yep. I like the longevity train. I like for people of mine to be doing this forever. So. If you're in a case, like I've had clients come up to me and say, oh, you know, I, I, my workout, I didn't have enough time. That's fucking fine. If you do not have time in your workout, like 
talk to your coach. Maybe it's an intensity thing and we can talk through that. But if yep. you're truly like not dicking around and you're still having to fucking talk to us, we'll shorten your workout so that you can get your 10 minutes of warm up because you do not want to be lifting at the intensity you need to lift to gain muscle without getting your body warm, especially in these colder months, man. And especially if you don't have like heated seats, like these bougie people that do, I don't have heated seats in my gym, but Brad does. So I've been enjoying driving with him at 4am with his heated seats because I'm like, Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. At least my bones are warm a little <laughs> bit, but fucking warm up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the, pur the purpose of warm up to me is really not even necessarily just get warm. It's more like, yeah, people have so many muscle activation issues and shit these days that like your whole your whole training session can easily go to waste uh, because you don't have the right muscles activated. You know, like glutes, for example, pretty much I would say most women and a lot, some men, a lot of men, too, Everybody. very serious, very Everybody. serious about training glutes. You know, for whatever capacity. Uh, yeah, I used to train this old guy to bring it back. You know, when I used to train people, there was an older guy who used to train. He was like. 70 maybe i don't know 65 70 whatever and i used to train him and he came in the gym one day and he said ryan i start training glutes and i said okay we had been training glutes like you know through deadlifts squats and all this he wanted to start doing more specific glute work and i said okay what what's bringing you to this this conclusion here and he says i don't want to have frog ass <laughs> <laughs> and I go, frog, frog ass. ass. He's oh. like, you know what? That's what all old guys end up with. They end up with fucking frog ass. It's just their back turns into a frog ass. And I was like, ah. damn, damn, oh. frog ass, dude. Nobody needs frog ass. You're right. Hit first immediately. Let's go. You know, so <laughs> ah. <laughs> I don't even remember the, yeah. <laughs> Oh, pa post pregnancy, I was talking about how flat my ass got because I'm pretty sure my daughter just sucked my ass out of me because it was big during my pregnancy, right? And then she breastfed and then my ass like disappeared. And I was talking to another mom about it and she was like, oh, yeah, like the cow butt, you know, like you see a cow and they just have like, I was like, yes, that is fucking what happens. So oh, ass, man. Cow ass, we don't want it, but warming up properly can ensures it works right yeah because you get to actually activate the muscles and the reason i brought glutes up too is to kind of circle back to that so it makes more sense is because <laughs> you know like people sit on their ass a lot and that means your glutes are sleeping they're not ready to work when you go to the gym and that means quads take over other things your back that's why a lot of people that you know train legs a lot uh get back problems they get you know disproportionately sized quads like you'll hear from a lot of women training glutes that they're like oh my legs are growing too much and my glutes are not growing it's because you don't have activation okay it's it's the whole point is you got to be able to have the activation of it, the muscle group you're working and have that be working for you and same goes for pretty much everybody you know uh training upper body too because you know we sit a lot we do all these things sit at a desk shoulders forward rounded back fucking all this crap that doesn't help so the warm-up really is key and uh, like Kayleen said, you know, I'd rather have an athlete miss a couple exercises at the end of their thing if they're crunched for time than I would have them miss those because it literally will be the defining factor of how effective the training session becomes. And, you know, warm ups, we should also be a little bit more specific when we say this. Like, this doesn't necessarily mean to me in any capacity, like, go get on the recumbent bike for five minutes and then go to work out. You know, it's not, those are not warm ups. Your warm ups should be targeted for what you're doing. And there should be a purpose for each one you're doing and why, and then boom, take it to training. Yeah. I, I, I have a confession, Ryan, this is confession hour right now. Um, <laughs> when I was teaching, this is going to get good. When I was teaching group fitness 5,000 days a week, I was going to the gym and I would see, I would have 10 minutes on the stairs and I'd be like, you know what? I did enough cardio today. I'm not going to do my on the stairs before. And Hey, guess what happened? Let me flash forward. I got fucked up in my back. So don't yeah. me. Yes. Yes. Kayleen oh. certainly did. She Whoa, did have two her years set of, of fuckery, man. Two years from, of from all that stuff. Yeah. So I mean, you know, to learn from that and you know, I've done the same thing actually, if we're going to talk about, things i uh, i tried to deadlift <laughs> i tried to deadlift uh 650 pounds once with no warm-up and i did do it so i still get a point for that There's but i fucking herniated like three discs in my back instantly so that was not worth it that took two years i had a peg leg for a full year i could not use my leg or flex my calf so again people and if you don't deadlift 650 pounds that's fine you can do that shit with 10 uh, you can do that with like 20 pounds I'll tell you, you most you clients, your kids sometimes. <laughs> yeah, most clients I've had that actually had serious back issues. It's like the 
smallest of things that do it, you know, that where set it off, you go pick up a piece of paper or something off the floor, bam, you're done, you're out. And now you got, you know, years of time. So just do the shit and it, it will help all your goals and keep you in good shape and keep you going. Uh, all right. Well, shit, where are we at here? Bring us home, right? Last one, last one. This one uh, goes back, I guess when I made my list, I must have been just in a mood today. I don't know, but not <laughs> cleaning your shit, people. Okay, not cleaning your shit. This is pissing me off because I've been sick three times in the past month and I haven't been sick much like over the years at all. Like I, I talk to people every week. I swear that like half my clients are sick most of the year. I don't even know why. I'm like, you've been sick for six months straight. What the hell's going on here? But whatever, you know, I, I don't go other places. I go to the gym in my house mostly. So, the, you know, I'm not, I'm not exposed, but I've been getting sick and I know it's from the fucking gym and all you people that aren't cleaning your shit because you get sick and then you come to the gym and you touch my shit. That I'm going to use later and I get sick because of you. So, you know, I'm coming at you because of this. Cause I think that's just crazy. Don't be doing this shit to me. And also because just in general, it's kind of fucking, you're, you're kind of a, I don't know how to put it, you know? It's kind of I I've when seen some benches. Yeah. Leave like yeah, like fucking sweat angels and shit on there like oh. nobody I mean, maybe some freaks want to be in on that, but most of the people <laughs> in the world do not want to be a part of that. No. Like there might be some guys like in benches somewhere somewhere in some subset of people that's but probably true <laughs> for the most part nobody wants to see your little angel from the top or the bottom on no, the equipment no. because that's just nasty. No, no. And you know what the worst, I would say the worst one is the guys that are like the balding old dude that has, you know, he's still got some hair, but not enough. And it gets so sweaty. And then they go bench on something. And then it just leaves like that. It looks like somebody took like a, like a cleaning cloth and just dipped it on the bench and left. And it's just this fucking sweat. And like, how do you leave that there, people? If that's you listening to this shit, I want to know where you live and we're going to talk. Like, meet me for coffee. I don't understand who you are and I got to figure out what's wrong with you. Because like, if you leave a visible sweat chunk, and I'm just going to call it a chunk because that's that's how you describe this. It's just a chunk of foul, cheese-like sweat <laughs> on a bench or anywhere else. Like, what are you thinking? That just doesn't... doesn't <laughs> That's what it's like. It's it's terrible. Like, and you can see it. I know you see it. You got eyes. You you know you see it. and You walk away. You're probably you're like, proud of it too. And you're just I'll like, let yeah, somebody else. Probably, yeah. I'm gonna let somebody else get that. Yeah. Uh, no. What are you thinking? Your mother and your father did not work at the gym. Oh, by the way, re rack your fucking weights while we're at it. Yeah. And don't go to the gym if you're fucking coughing. Yeah. Just yeah. Get, in there. That's the other thing. Gym employees, I don't trust them to clean anything these days either. So clean your shit. Don't assume the gym guy, the guy behind the desk, is going to go clean your bench for you or that I will do it. And, like, I've confronted people about it. I, I did this actually a few weeks ago because this is how I am. So if you want to improve your cleaning equipment, train around me, people. Some dude did that exact sweat chunk on an incline bench. And he left. He picked up his bottle and all this shit. And I could see it because I was waiting. I was standing right next to him. <laughs> And I was like, are you going to clean this? And he looked at me and he was just like, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, come on, man. You're killing me, bro. Dude. So clean your shit, people. I mean, again, I I'm not trying to get sick. I'm not trying to bathe in your sweat chunk. I'm not <laughs> to trying to do any of this. Just leave it. And let's keep the gym the place where we all go to achieve goals and get results and enjoy being there. Let's keep it the place it should be. Let's keep it like that. Ooh, I want to do an episode of like how to avoid getting sick at the gym too, because I have some pointers on that. So if that's something you're oh, interested nice. in, let's just do that next feel, week. Oh my gosh, please. Because there's so many things, so many things I want to talk about. Yeah, let's do that next week. Cause uh, it is the season of sickness. I was back to back sick for like two weeks. A uh, bunch of people have been too. Brianna was just sick. Same, she got the exact same things I did somehow. And like seven of my other clients in like the past weeks, literally sick and then better for two days, sick another week. Yeah. It's been like one by one by one. And it's like, woo, woo, oh, I'm back at the gym. Oh, I got knocked out. And it's like, so yeah, yeah we'll talk yeah. about all that. We'll talk about should you train, should you not? All yep. that fucking good shit. Next, my next week. To take, so stay tuned. 
Cool. All right. Well, on my next week's note, next time. So sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Write that down. Write that down. Uh, and thank you all for listening. If you made it this far, this was a kind of crazy episode. It gets crazier. So stay tuned, subscribe, be, be, be part of the whole thing and uh, tell Kayleen what macros to try. And I don't know what else yes. to tell you to do. I guess that's it. You got anything to tell people to do? Uh, follow the cheat truck AZ, but that's a different thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Spoiler. Teaser, teaser for next week. I'll go over it next Spoiler. week. Spoiler. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll be back uh, next week as routine. No, the week after. All right. <laughs> Two weeks. Bye. <laughs> Bye.